I was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma, breast cancer, um, in July of 2010. And I was six months pregnant at the time. And I had just been in the shower and I had found a lump in my breast. And I called my family physician right away and she had said, oh, you know, you're six months pregnant. Millions of women have lumps in their breast, so it's probably fine, but let's just do an ultrasound to be sure. So I had gone in the following week and did an ultrasound, and from there, it was like everything just kind of tumbled really fast out of control, because as soon as I was given a report that it was invasive ductal carcinoma, I was like, what? <laughs> like, this isn't just a clogged milk duct like I was thinking it would be. And there's no breast cancer history that I'm aware of in my family. Um, not really much cancer history, actually. So it was kind of surreal, very emotional. And it just felt like, how could this be happening? You know, it's supposed to be the happiest time in my life. I was pregnant, about to have a baby. And how could it all change so fast? So I was very scared and met with um, one of the best oncologists at a Princess Margaret Hospital, which is downtown Toronto, which is known as a very well-renowned cancer research hospital. And um, the ball just started rolling. It was like, okay, so you're going to be scheduled for surgery. You'll have a lumpectomy. Then you'll start your chemo after your baby's born and do radiation. And I was like, really? Like, that's just it. It's a recipe card and I just have to follow this. And anyways, it was, that was it. And I, I, I guess to say the least, I was scared and I just wanted the lump out. I wanted it gone. Um, but I also had a pregnancy that I was dealing with. So I couldn't really make these decisions as fast as I wanted to. Um, because I was pregnant, they didn't want to do the surgery right away because they wanted to wait till I was so many weeks just in case I went into an emergency delivery situation. So they wanted my baby to be at least 35 weeks old before they did the surgery. So at that point I had some time to wait and I started reading some books and um, it was actually um, Suzanne Summers' book that I had picked up called Knockout. And it was almost like I was scared to be reading it but it was like I started reading about other options and other opportunities and write about IPT and what is it and where do I do this in Canada. Um, I had found a good naturopath in Canada when I first got diagnosed and I had brought a lot of my questions to him and he had um, told me that it wasn't something that was readily done. It was more kind of known in the States and when I'd be willing to go outside to do my treatment in the States. And at that time I had said, well, not really. I just, I'm gonna have a baby and how do I uproot my family? How do I, you know? And I said, but give me the information because I need to look and see what my other opportunities are. And I think for me, it was a breath of fresh air because when I started reading her book and going on the websites that she had recommended and Dr. Dahani, who's this naturopath who I see in Toronto, had recommended me to go on an Oasis of Healing website and read about Dr. Lodi. I had kind of, it was, it was a breath of fresh air for me because I realized there's other opportunities. And I think the biggest advice that I want to give people, if I can, is don't feel you have to rush to make decisions. Um, take your time, do your research, and know that there's other opportunities and options that are out there for you. I could go through the conventional treatment, which was recommended at home, but could I really go through and change the lifestyle that grew this cancer in the first place? And so I needed a good grounding, a good place where I could really heal and look at all the factors that brought me to the point where I was in my life. So coming here really offered me that opportunity it lifted me up out of my life. And even though you think it's not doable, I came here with a two week old baby. My mom, my daughter, who was two and a half at the time, and my husband, who initially couldn't come out 
because he was working at home. So he would come out for kind of 10 days and then fly home and come back out. But it was a great opportunity. So for people who think it's not doable, it totally is. I think getting immersed in it, going through all the motions of learning how to prep food, learning how to detox properly, learning the different things that you have to do in order to have this cancer leave your body and keep your body cancer free. I couldn't have asked for a better place for it to happen. In the medical system, it just, I felt like it couldn't offer that to me. I was a recipe and I was a 36 year old that got diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma. And because you're young, your cancer is likely aggressive. So here's the recipe for you. And it's, here's what the computer says you need to be on in terms of your chemo drugs. But here it was not like that. It was very catered to you as an individual. From the moment that, you know, I met Dr. Lodi, I had done a telephone consult with him prior to coming down. And so that was a huge help for me in order to make my decision to come down here. And then when I did meet with him, and I kind of went over specifically like my actual case, brought all my reports down. He was so confident. He just stood up. I remember in his office, he says, we've got this, we've got it. Like he knew exactly what needed to be done and was so confident from the get-go. And I think that, it's, that spoke volumes to me. Like I thought, wow, he's confident. He's you know, got this in the bag. Why am I, why am I worrying about this? You know, yes, my PET scan is showing things and I'm scared and this isn't what I wanted, but there was never a, a waiver of concern. And then even when I did my PET scan, when I left, um, it was, you know, and I was, oh, is it going to be clear? Or is it not? Because I was not going to leave here until I did, I had a clean PET scan. And, you know, there's a lot of time and money and commitment that's given, but to me, when I chose to do this, I knew that I had to complete the program. It's really important to complete your program. I think it's hard to, to come down and do part of it or not commit to it. Um, and so, you know, if I didn't have that clear PET scan, then I was happy to stay longer and do what needed to be done. And it was clear. 